James Henry coming to you again with an occasional thought from St. James, the church where I serve. Uh, really a thought for myself as well, uh, reaching out to you in these times when we're struggling. And the truth is, if I'd thought about this, this is something I could have been doing for a very long time because we all struggle at various points in our lives, figuring out what's going on, uh, circumstances change, relationships change, where we live changes, people that matter to us change, and all of that change brings anxiety and uncertainty. And certainly uh, it can be exacerbated when it's not just me, but it's more of a system-wide or a society-wide kind of uncertainty, like when a pandemic strikes, say, for instance. Since the middle of March here in Virginia, um, things shut down, and now they're slowly reopening, and, and sometimes it feels like not so slowly, way too fast. Uh, it's reopening, and we want to see other people. We want to be with other people, and that struggle gets to us. So as I thought about, you know, what can we do to help ourselves in times of struggle like this? That's why we've been talking about practices and things we could do. My practice, my first practice is to say to you, which is very important, that you need to hear that you are infinitely loved, that God loves you just the way you are, just where you are. God made you that way. You are made in God's image. You bear a unique signature of God that will never be repeated again, ever in history. Just you. Just you. And in addition to bear bearing that signature, you're infinitely precious to that God uh, for the person that you are and infinitely loved. And I'm thankful for you. Even if I don't know you, I am thankful that God is a God that loves diversity and beauty and difference and that we're not all just clones of each other but unique individuals uh, shaped in that image. Now, I, I said to you, I, I have a couple of practices, and I said it was a basic practice. That's how I entitled this. It's always an interesting thing when it's a basic practice. What does that mean? What does he mean? I want to offer to you two practices today. Um, one is self-focused, and one is world-focused, or outside yourself focused. So let's begin with the self. Let's begin with where you are. Perhaps like me, you spend a fair portion of your time, I won't say trapped, but sometimes it feels that way, uh, in your own home, in your own space. Uh, you don't go out uh, because you're concerned about coronavirus. And even though you wear a mask, nobody else seems to want to wear a mask. Or you keep going to places where people make a big deal about not wearing their mask, and it concerns you. So the first practice for yourself is to be kind to yourself today. And I don't just mean in some kind of generic, warm, fuzzy kind of way. I mean, find five minutes in your day and do something that you really like to do. Make yourself your favorite kind of tea if it's in the house. Um, or a cup of coffee and just sit next to a window for five minutes and look out on the world. Notice that what, what what's happening to the trees in your neighborhood? What what are, what's happening to the grass in your neighborhood? What uh, what is going on in your garden if you have one? Um, what do you see happening out in that world? Uh, you know, take five minutes. Maybe it's your guilty pleasure. You have this favorite song that you like to listen to periodic. Put that on for five minutes and turn off your phone. Set everything aside and just listen to the music. Be kind to yourself in some specific way. At least one specific way today. That's your first practice. That's practice number one. Be kind to yourself in a specific way. Now, after you've been kind to yourself, and maybe you're feeling a little bit more positive in this world, what would it look like if you channeled some of that positivity after being kind to yourself to be kind to somebody else? It seems to me there are a couple of ways to be kind in the world. One's a more general way, and then one's more a particular way, uh, uh, more specific. So let's say in a general way, find a local food bank and uh, see if they have an Amazon wish list. Go on their website and maybe make a small donation if you can or find out what they need and 
And if you do go out of your house and you shop, shop for it. Or like the West End Food Pantry that's at West, uh, that's uh, on the West End of Alexandria at St. James, we have an Amazon wish list, and you can pick out some items, and they get shipped directly to our house, and then uh, we take it from our house over to the food pantry. And every Monday night, people who are hungry on the West End of Alexandria can supplement their food with the food that's in our West End food pantry. So that's a more general way. Reach out to a food pantry uh, uh, or some other kind of giving to an organization that's making a difference in your community. But more specifically, think of someone in your life that might just need a kind word. And thinking of the same five minutes you gave yourself, could you write a five-minute note to them? Could you call them on the phone and say, I've only got a few minutes, but I'd really just wanted to check and see how you're doing, what's going on? You know, so you could call, you could text, I suppose, you could email, and if that's your generational thing and that feels personal and connected, do it. Do it. Uh, you know, my I show my age when I talk about how old school I am and I talk about calling people on the phone. Um or emailing, that's old, or uh, or something like that. Uh, share a picture. Yeah, I mean, share a picture of yourself or something exciting that you saw in the neighborhood, a bird on your windowsill um, with someone else. Do something for someone else that's an act of kindness, random as it may be, uh, to touch their lives. So two practices today. And then if they work for you today, could you maybe make them a part of your day tomorrow. I'm talking about two five-minute practices. One, give yourself the gift of a, a silent moment, a sitting moment, uh, close the door, turn off the lights kind of moment, uh, go somewhere where you can be by yourself or uh, whatever it may be that you think is a good gift to yourself. Take that five minutes as a gift and give it to yourself as the gift that it is for the gift that you are. But then don't just hoard gifts for yourself. Look for a way that you might gift the same kindness you gave yourself to someone else in your neighborhood, in your uh, larger world, um, in a general way, or, you know, even better, maybe in a more specific way. Someone you know that only you can reach out and touch. You Only you would call. Only you would email. Only you would text. Um, because it's in times like these of crisis and uncertainty and anxiety and uh, being overwhelmed that being kind to ourselves is, is a gift. It's like a gift God wants to give you if you'll let yourself receive it, is to give that kindness to yourself. And then to turn that kindness out to others and find a way, maybe just in five minutes, to be kind to someone else whoever that someone else is in this world that you might want to be kind to. And those practices could become a part of your everyday practice. You could get up in the morning and it can kind of be an exciting thing. Uh, at least in the beginning, everything's exciting sometimes. Uh, an exciting thing. What am I going to do as a special gift to myself? What am I going to do as a special gift to others around me, to the world? And it could draw you in to that kind of that kind of way of saying, now there'll be some days you get up and you're just like, I just want to get out of bed. That's all I can do. But practice anyway. Practice anyway. As always, never forget, you are an infinite gift. You are who you are because you are made in God's image. A unique fingerprint of God. You're covered with those fingerprints. Uh, God has helped to shape who you are and loves you just that way. Just that way. And, um, and you're infinitely precious. You may not feel that way in your own house, shut away, but you are. So don't forget that. Don't forget that. Infinitely precious, infinitely loved, you are a gift. And uh, may these practices help carry you through this week. Go in peace. And uh, I will see you again on these occasional messages.